Today we're going to talk about an antenna that is so stealth that even the pouch it comes in is nearly invisible. And we're talking, of course, about the Cha OCF40, which is chameleon antennas off center fed dipole, which is resonant on 40, 20, 10, and 6. And of course, it disappeared when I first held it up because my camera's uh, looking at a green screen. And so it saw this green pouch and saw it as nearly invisible. This comes with two different lengths of wire. Wire. And like I said, it's going to be good on 20 and 40, which are two of my favorite operating bands. And then on 10 and 6 meters, we're going to take this backyard portable, go ahead and get it set up, and we're going to do a demonstration of it. I'm Bob KD4 BMG HOA Ham, and I call this stealth because you could use this at your HOA and with the appropriate color wire, you can just blend into the sky. I chose high vis orange because I want you to be able to see what I'm doing, but you can pick one of several different colors to use in your HOA. This would make a perfect permanent antenna install at your QTH if you're not in an HOA. This is lightweight and small enough that you can take it poda or soda. So let's make some modifications to our child portamast so we can put this on without having any interference with our metal portamast pole and make sure that we get a good reading on our SWR and make some contacts. Let's head to the backyard. Here's the final installation of the antenna. What do we do when we have a metal pole and we need to get some isolation from our antenna so there's no interference? We need a non-conductive cross member and a crossover plate. And we're going to be using the G-Gable GRM CPC crossover plate. We'll just put it together here in the shack and then take it out and attach it to the Chaw Portamast. And this will give us the separation we need for our wire antenna to be away from the metal mast so there is no interference between the two. And we get the SWR and performance that we're expecting. Let's take down the 30 foot wire, which is the station reference antenna attached to a Cha hybrid mini and going up to that portamast. Once the portamast is easily and quickly completely collapsed, we're going to go ahead and attach this cross member to it. I attached the nuts to the U-bolts in the shack because I didn't want to drop any hardware, but alas, that failed. You'll see me eventually looking down at the ground trying to find a tiny nut. That failed, didn't work. I'm only hand tightening here because I didn't use the topper on the portamast. This is a temporary setup for testing. If I were permanently installing this cross member, I would have used the topper to the portamast and really torqued down on these. With the cross member in place, we're ready to attach the matching transformer. I always use these S-clips on some shock cord and then I attach whatever I need to. The S-clips allow me to quickly, easily attach an antenna as well as remove it. And the little piece of shock cord there gives uh, some flex to the whole system. I'm looking back and forth, trying to decide which direction to run my wires. Remember, we have two lengths of wire. I have a very small backyard in my homeowner's association. So now I'm just trying to figure out in my mind, based on where the portamast is located, which direction to go with my wires. On your first go, stretch out that wire across the ground before you attach the terminal to the matching transformer. Don't ask me how I know. It just works better than once you wind this up on a winder in the future. You should be able to start at the transformer and work your way back. First of all, I'm going to extend the portamast all the way up to get a better idea of exactly where I want to tie down the wires. And that'll tell me where I want to put stakes in the ground to take the slack out. You're going to see me bring the mast back down here in a second. And what I'm going to do at that point in time is just add my coax. The matching transformer does come with a BNC connector. I don't have cable with BNC, so I had to use an adapter here. Once I have my cable attached, the portamast goes back up again. And then I go out to the far extremes of my wire and I go ahead and stake them in the ground. I use something called cam jams. It lets me take my power cord, go through the back side of this cam jam, and the power cord literally goes into a small piece of plastic that has teeth on it and it jams it in place. And when I want to take it apart, I just release the cam and it comes right out. I find these to be really helpful. There's a hook on the other end that attaches to the ring on the end of my chameleon antenna wire. We're going to go ahead and get our spike in the ground. I use very lightweight uh, tent spikes or spikes that are used for camping and I keep these in my go bag. They're fantastic. 
And now we have our antenna completely set up in the backyard for the entire HOA to get a look at. So I'm not flying a flag. I'm going to have, you know, people looking at this. So I want to get my testing complete. And as we're looking back at the overall antenna install, I went and I grabbed my Rig Expert Stick Pro so we can get our SWR. And here we are on 40, 20, 10, and 6 exactly as Chameleon Antenna said the SWR would be. It's in great shape, so we can go ahead now and make some contacts. And that's up next. Kilo Delta 4, Bravo, Mike, Golf. All right, I got it that time. Kilo Delta 4, Bravo, Mike, Golf. QSL? Roger, Roger. You're about a 5858 into Tampa Bay, Florida today, friend. Uh, QSL, uh, copy to Tampa Bay there. Yeah, we're uh, located in Lawson, Missouri. Lawson, Missouri, just northeast of Kansas City, about 40 miles northeast of Kansas City, Missouri. Kilo Delta 4, Bravo, Mike, Golf. Okay, let me make sure I got the Kilo Delta 4, Bravo, Mike, Golf. Roger, Roger, you're 5656, Tampa, Florida. Roger, I got you, uh, if you got me at 56, I got you about a 57 here in the Pentagon. Name here is Ron, Romeo Alaska, November, and uh, thank you for making contact with the our special event station today, operating from in the walls of the Pentagon today. Hi, thank you very much, Gary, for the uh, contact, 73. Who is the other, starting with Kilo, ending with Golf? Kilo, Delta 4, Bravo, Mike, Golf. Got it, got it, got it, got it, got it, got it, Bob. Kilo, Delta 4, Bravo, Mike, Golf. Yeah, like I said, the band's starting to drop. Bob, you are at the top. You're about a 5 and 8, a 5 and 8 into part 2203, okay? QSL, you're 5 9, Tampa, Florida. Hey, thank you for 5 9 into Florida, 73. QRZ? I don't let living in an HOA prevent me from operating locally, regionally, and around the world with my amateur radio. I believe that these circumstances I find myself in teach me how to be more creative. When I find myself in an emergency situation someday, it won't be ideal. I will have to learn to adapt. I've adapted with attic antennas, small portable verticals that go up backyard portable for operating and then come down after a couple of hours, or long wires and end feds that get put up and are stealth because they disappear. The most recent has been my flagpole mast, and that has been fantastic. It's now the station reference antenna. I haven't done much with dipoles. After this experience, I understand what all the hype is about. It sure was nice to grab the FX4CR and have a resonant antenna ready to go. So I think this is something I'm going to have to put the sleep committee on to see if I can come up with some way to put this up in the backyard in a more permanent situation. And until then, it's going onto the wire winder and into this small green pouch ready for my MCOM and POTA bag. It gets two thumbs up from HOA Ham. I hope you found this useful. Talk to you soon, friend. 73.